Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be guiding you through Total Lab's latest image analysis software, Colony Counter, which can be used to count cells, particulates or bacterial colonies within images automatically without the need for additional equipment. Oh, the new Fretics Colony Counter software from Total Lab. Now this software is designed to not only count colonies within an image, um, but also to count number of cells in a cell viability assay sample, uh, or detect particulates in, say, a water sample for water quality control, or even something as broad as, say, metal filings in a hydraulic fluid sample. At its core, this piece of software massively simplifies and automates the process of detecting particles within an image. So there are some um, manufacturers out there that provide automated colony counting and things like that to reduce the burden on people within the life sciences that perform this routinely. However, they typically are part of a larger system. So it's a piece of equipment that you have to buy. Um, it's quite expensive. I don't know the, the exact price, but the idea is that it's all within the system. You buy the system. It's quite expensive and you have to have that system within your lab. Our software is designed to work with images from any kind of imaging device, whether it be a microscope with a camera attached or um, like a gel documentation device or some, or a scanner or something like that. Our software is open to all image types that you can bring in and automatically count colonies and detect colonies and take measurements, things like that. Um, and so it's a much cheaper option to give you a lot of the benefit that those systems offer. Um, and obviously automated colony counting does come with the benefit of reducing human error if you're you know manually going through and counting each of these colonies not knowing if you counted a colony twice things like that so it does have the potential to save lab users and, and users in other industries a huge amount of time by automating that process and simplifying that process as much as we can and this software is of course along with all our all of our other software available in a 21 cfr or gmp compliant format so if you've used any of our other Fretix modules of image analysis software, you'll recognize this screen. So this is kind of um, the image setup screen. So I have brought in this image and it's not the world's best quality image. It's only it's a JPEG image, so it's been compressed and it's only got a, a, a bit depth of eight bits per pixel. We would always recommend at least using a, a TIFF image, so an uncompressed image um, with at least 16 bits per pixel. Um, and that's very much the industry standard. So any modern camera that's fitted to a microscope or scanner or gel documentation device will support TIFF at 16 bit export. So you would image your plate, your wells, whatever it may be, export the image and bring it into this software for analysis. So this is the image view. And um, what we have at the top left here is a representation of how the software is seeing the image. So what we want to see is our signal, the things that we're interested in measuring in this lovely teal color here, with our background being represented as black. And we can see this in the 3D view here. The colonies that we're interested in counting and measuring are represented by these high peaks. And the background is represented by the darkness behind them. So if I had an inverted image, for example, these, these peaks were displayed as troughs and the background was showing up very high as teal, we know that we need to come here and invert this image for the measurements to be taken correctly. And we can pop out this 3D view and save it to our clipboard, copy it to our clipboard as kind of a screenshot or save it as a file, and then put that into marketing materials, presentations, posters. It's a really visually striking way of showing your results and producing kind of excellent quality scientific imagery for wherever you may need it. So when saved as a file, it can be important it's PowerPoint, Word, Canva, whatever you're using to produce your media. And at the bottom here, we can see the current image view. So this is the way the image has been brought in. And we've got all of the options available to us in terms of image adjustments that we have within the other Fretics module. So if I click here, I can change the contrast of the image and get it to display how I want it to. If it's not, say if I imported it and it showed like this, I know I need to change that. We do perform an automatic contrast and brightness adjustment when we bring images into the software that the user is not aware of, um, but that's not always perfect. So you do have these options to override that to try and get the best view for yourselves. Um, we have the brightness slider up here 
and we have a number of false color heat maps that we can apply to our image um, to increase the contrast between what we're trying to measure and the background of the image. So it's quite obvious where our colonies are on our plate here. Um, but if I had, say, a high background signal that was very close to my colony signal or they were very similar colored, I could apply something like a false color heat map and this would help me massively when trying to define the edges of my colonies. Now these are well-rounded, good circular colonies, um, but if I have these different species of bacteria or uneven kind of shaped pieces of debris or something in my sample, it might be quite difficult to ascertain where the edge of that debris is when you want to kind of set a boundary for measurement. So we've got all of those options available to us, and I'll just reset this back to the native color here. Um, so we've got all those options available to us to make the job of the analyst much easier. So if I come through now to the detect mode, by default, if I left click and drag, it will give me a circle to draw around my sample. And this is the area of interest. This is where the area within um, the plate or the wells or whatever it is I'm measuring that the software is going to look for colonies or circles, essentially. Now, you can change this to be a rectangle. So if you're using slides or kind of square well plates or something that is rectangular in shape, uh, you can change that to a rectangle. I'll change that back to a circle now. And you're not limited to just one circle. So you can draw as many as you want and they will all be treated as individual areas for detection and counting. And you can see that they've, they've added up on top. So say, for example, if you used a scanner to image a six well plate and you wanted to get a colony count for each well within that plate, you would draw six well, you would draw six circles, and this would give you the count per circle, the count per well. Now I'll just get rid of these. So you don't have to do things one by one. You can take an image of a whole plate and get the automatic get the software to automatically detect colonies within those. So that could save an operator a huge amount of time if they had, say, six agar plates that they need to count. They could image them all at the same time and count the colonies all within one click. Big detect button here. Um, rather than doing one, finishing, moving on to the next one, counting, moving on, you can see how this would take much less time, be much more, much easier for, for the analyst or the operator to perform. Now, users do have the option of changing the sensitivity or the parameters of the colony detection algorithm. I'm not going to delve into that now. I'm just going to use the defaults and see how well we get on. So if I click detect here, you can see that we've now got circles marking the edge of kind of the boundaries of the colonies that have been detected by the software. And we start to get measurements from our colonies. Uh, so we get an area measurement, a circularity measurement, and a volume measurement. And we've also got other measurements that we can build into our results. And as with our other image analysis software, we can export this to a CSV file to move it into Excel and then do other things with it in other pieces of software. Or we can copy this table to our clipboard and paste that wherever it needs to go. MATLAB, anywhere else, you know, somewhere for some processing. But by default, it's done a really good job on this image. And it's telling me that there are 227 colonies within this area of interest that I've detected. So if you do need to make any manual adjustments or you would like to make any manual adjustments, say if there's any writing uh, on your image, on your agar plate, or there's any aberrations or any colonies you don't want to include, or if you want to have different groups of, say you've got different groups of bacteria and want to kind of segment them off into their kind of species you can do this uh, you can do this by using different circles or you can you do this manually through the manual editing mode now when we come through to the edit mode the first option is to select so just click on one colony or you can detect automatically all colonies with a low circularity now if i click this you can see it's detected these areas on the edge of the image um, which is kind of the edge of the plastic of the of this plate. Um, it has low circularity and I can delete those automatically. Um, it's useful for deleting um, 
aberrations or anomalous results or anything like that. So say if you've got a, like a hair on this plate or just a, a random particulate that shouldn't be there, the low circularity detection will allow you to automatically detect those most of the time. You'll see that it has detected some of my colonies, so I'm not going to use this now. Uh, we've got the ability to draw on a manual circle and we can left click and drag to change the size of that circle to be added to a colony. You see it's added as colony and a measurement is performed of these areas. And you can delete colonies. So if the automatic detection algorithm has detected a, a piece of debris on your plate or some writing or something like that, you can easily come through and delete those from your analysis. And you can also manually split colonies. So if you see these two colonies here, the software has detected them as one large colony because they overlap in the middle here. There is no, there's no distinct uh, line that separates these two circles in terms of the image. So the software can't automatically define this as one circle and two circles. But what I can do is come through to the split tool, draw this line down, and then the software will say this is one colony this is another colony so you do have that kind of manual intervention if necessary but if you can automatically detect 90 percent of your colonies and you need to manually just 10 you're still saving a huge amount of time especially if you were doing this manually anyway and in terms of background removal the next step we have two methods of background removal we have the image rectangle now if you've used 1d and image analysis software before, you'll probably recognize the image rectangle as being a fairly standard method for background removal, certainly in 1D gels and Western blots. The idea here is that the software gives you a rectangle and you define where and the size of that rectangle and the software will average the pixel value for every pixel within this rectangle and it will come out with a number, a pixel intensity. The software will then say, this is the average background and subtract it from every colony within your image. It's extremely useful and accurate for images such as this, where there's quite a uniform background. Um, it's not as useful in images where the background changes quite a lot, because obviously the average value here for background will be quite different from the average value here where it's darker. But it is quite good in, in this image. And we do also have the mode non-spot background removal method. Now, what this does is it, it, for every colony, it expands an invisible border around the colony of this margin. So four at the moment is the default. So it's four pixels. So it will grow the circle around a colony invisibly um, by four pixels and then take the average value within those four pixels around each colony and apply that as the background removal method, that average as the background removal value. So it, sorry, it doesn't take the average, it takes the mode. Um, so kind of the, the most common pixel value within that border is then applied to each colony. So this is a much more um, colony to colony or per colony background subtraction method. There is a caveat with this is you can't see where the border is. So if you've got lots of spots that are very close together, lots of colonies that are very close together, there's the potential that by growing the border around a colony, it will intersect with a section of another spot, which will obviously count towards the, the, the mode calculation to be defined as the background. So it will skew your results in a particular direction. Um, but in a case such as this where our spots are quite far so you can control how far the margin is or you can use the image rectangle in cases such as that but this is quite a sparsely populated plate um, so for the majority of colonies in this plate uh, mode non-spot would be a good background removal method but we've always got uh, image rectangle for removal as well now you can turn on the background results so you can see what the background value is and what's been kind of removed and how we've reached the results that we have. And that would be kind of, that would be a full analysis essentially. Now I've obviously sped through this for the benefit of the viewer. Um, it wouldn't be very uh, exciting for a viewer to watch me fine tune the minutiae of this. 
Um, but if you wanted to export the results, you can export that in the form of a PDF report from, from the software directly, or you can export it in terms of CSV or copy, it, copy this measurements table, including whichever of these options you've turned on, to your clipboard and then paste that into another piece of software, MATLAB, SPSS, Excel, wherever you want it to go, you can just copy and paste it nice and easily. We're not locked down to any particular manufacturer. Our software will accept almost any image from any manufacturer's device um, and it can massively save people a huge amount of time when trying to count colonies, particulates, cells, anything like that. So that's the Freretics Colony Counter, the new image analysis software from Total Lab. As ever, thanks for watching, and if you'd like to try a free copy of our Colony Counter software within your lab on your own images, please follow the links in the description below.